What picture comes to mind when you hear the term God's law? What if the original meaning would cause you to see a new picture? Well, my friends, the Hebrew word behind the English term law paints a beautiful picture filled with colors of power, practicality, and purpose. So let's take a look into the art gallery of scripture to find out more about this original word that I consider a masterpiece. My name is Keith Johnson of Biblical Foundations Academy International. Our mission is to inspire people around the world to build a biblical foundation for their faith. Welcome to Scripture Bites. Let's start digging by launching our Scripture Bites interface. Loading interface. Uploading scripture. I'm uploading our control verse to the SBI that will help us expedite the process of discovery so that you'll understand the scripture bite for yourself and be able to apply it into your life. Our control verse is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. We're reading from the King James Version. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Before we dive too deeply into this scripture bite, I have to confess that when I hear the words, law of thy mother, I'm reminded of a funny theme from the movie, The Waterboy. His mama laid down the law on just about everything. Let's take a look. Is there anybody here can tell me where happiness comes from? No. Anyone? Oh. All right, let's hear what mama has to say on the subject. Mom say that happiness is from magic rays of sunshine that come down when you're feeling blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, Mama's wrong again. <laughs> no kind of saying this, you're wrong. Mama's right. <laughs> the water boy believed that what Mama said was law. The question is whether the law of thy mother in the KJV is referring to what I used to call Mama's law or something completely different. Okay, let's get serious and get back to work. In order to understand this verse, we need a little context. Let's start with Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, that lead up to our control verse. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtly to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb, and the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Proverbs chapter 1, 1 through 7. Now back to our control verse in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. In the first seven verses of the KJV translation, King Solomon lays out the benefits of the Proverbs and then after our quote, Mama's Law unquote verse, we get a picture of the outward manifestation of the internal application of this scripture bite. More on that later. Now that we have some context, let's take a closer look at what I call the source behind Mama's Law. In the Hebrew scroll, we read the letters with the vowel markers from right to left. Shema, Bene Musar Avicha, the Al Titosh Torat Imka. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. <laughs> that is according to the King James Version. Since this verse starts with a fairly familiar word, let's learn a little Hebrew. Some of you may already know the first word reading from right to left. It is the exact same word in the exact same grammatical form as the first word of what is called the Shema. This word Shema is used in the imperative mood 63 times in the Hebrew Bible. In this imperative form, it doesn't simply mean listen if you have time or hear if you can. It is a command to tune in, hear, and put into practice what is being declared. This word calls for our attention, belief, and action. Now for a little grammatical insight. Since the verse starts with the word Shema, we would expect the KJV translators to emphasize it, like in Deuteronomy 6.4. Rather, they make a slight adjustment in English, which loses the significance of the word placement. The verse in the KJV starts with, my son, and then places the imperative Shema after my son, here, which in my humble opinion, diminishes the power of the placement and grammatical form of the word. It's the difference between saying, my son, here, versus, here, my son. It's a small but significant change. 
The second word we want to take a glance at is musar, in the phrase instruction of thy father. The KJV translators do a really interesting thing here. They decide to translate musar as instruction, yet they use a variety of English words when they see this Hebrew word in other places in scripture. For example, chastening, chastise, correction, discipline, instruction, punishment, reproof, and warning. The question is, why did they choose the word instruction here rather than any of the other eight English words they use elsewhere? The answer may be because of the use of the word law later in the verse. Here's another verse that can shed more light on this concept of instruction. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 26, For his God doth instruct him to discretion, and doth teach him. Vayisrol le mishpat elohav yorenu. The word vayisrol is the same word but in a different grammatical form as musar, and in this verse it has again been translated as a variant of instruction. However, the word teach, yoreno, is related and has a different but very interesting three-letter Hebrew root that gets me excited about Bama's law. Let's skip ahead and see what the SBI can help us discover. Now let's take a peek at the next to last word of our control verse. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8, Shema b'nei musar avicha v'al titosh torat imcha. The KJV translator saw the Hebrew word torat and translated it into English as law. This word is in what is called the construct form. That means that in this case, the last letter, tav, has stepped in for the letter he of the word Torah and is functioning like the English word of. Do I still have your attention? Now, let's take a look at other places in Proverbs where law of is used by the KJV translators to see if it is based on the same Hebrew word Torah. Proverbs 1 verse 8. Law of, Proverbs 6.20. Law of, Proverbs 13, 14. Law of, Proverbs 31, 26. All of them use Torah for law of. Looks consistent to me. Now let's see what the KJV does with the root of the same word, which is the three letters Yud, Resh, He, Yerah, when it is not referring to the word Torah or law. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. The root behind the word taught is the same root of Torah, Yud, Resh, He, or Yerah, Proverbs 5, 13, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. The root word behind teachers is the same root word of Torah, Yerah, Proverbs 6, verse 13, he winketh his eye, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. The root word behind teacheth is the same root word of Torah. Yerah, Proverbs 11.25, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall water it also himself. The root word behind watereth is the same root word of Torah. Yerah, Proverbs 26.18, as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, the root word behind casteth is the same root word of Torah. Yerah. Are you starting to see the artwork of this word? We only looked in Proverbs if we checked the whole Hebrew Bible art gallery we find that the root word Yerah is used 990 times in 14 different forms. Only 223 times is it used in the form Torah or law, depending on your translation. Other words that spring forth from this beautiful word, to shoot or to throw, to rain or to water, to teach or to show, archer, early rain, teacher, law. The top four words found that use the same root Yerah as Mama's law, Torah shoot or throw, teach or show, and of course our word law. What really gets me excited is that the root of our word combined with the word shalom, meaning peace, shows up 669 times as the number one time the root word Yerah is used for the word Yerushalayim or Jerusalem. Let's look at another verse to show how the root of the word Torah is used. Just after God gave the Ten Commandments, it says in Exodus 24:12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tablets of stone, and a law, ve ha Torah, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Le ha rotam, both words, law and teach, are from, you guessed it, Yerah, which is the root of the word of Mama's law in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Oh, and by the way, that verse we looked at earlier that had two different Hebrew words but had the similar English words of instruct and teach? Guess what the root is of the word teach? Yoreno. You guessed it, Yerah. 
Isaiah 28, 26, for his God doth instruct him to discretion and doth teach him. For those who don't know my story, I received a Torah scroll that has a really important verse on its cover. The Torah will go forth from Zion and the word of, and it has Yud, He, Vav, He, Yehovah from Jerusalem. Ki mitzion tetze Torah vedabar Yehovah merushalayim. This is one of my favorite scripture bites bonuses. Torah and Merushalayim, Jerusalem, both words have the same root Yerah embedded in the verse. <laughs> can somebody say amen? I can hardly wait for the scripture bite on Exodus 3.14 that will unpack the four letter word on the cover of my Torah scroll that represents the name of God. Based on everything we just learned, a fair definition of the word Torah would have to include directions, instructions, teaching, and showing. Agreed? By the way, there is no word in Proverbs 1.8 that means law, at least in English. And in terms of the name Jerusalem, which comes from the same root as Torah, combined with the word shalom, peace, one day Jerusalem will lead the world in teaching and showing the way to true lasting peace. Now it's time for us to read Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 in today's modern English language, but with the original text in view, ready for you to download to your mind and hide in your heart. Hear, my son, your father's discipline, and do not forsake the Torah, instruction of your mother. SBV, Scripture Bites version. Well, there you have it. If Bobby Boucher's mother is basing what she says on the Torah rather than the ambiguous and sometimes negative English word law, then what mama says goes. If you read the next verse, you will see the manifestation and application of our Scripture Bite verse. I encourage you to do a little digging and see what you come up with by applying some of what you have learned here. I'm Keith Johnson, and until next time, I have two words for you to remember and do. Keep reading. This is your SBI assistant. Did you enjoy this scripture bite? If so, share it with your friends. Be sure to become a free member at bfainternational.com to download a PDF companion study guide for this edition of Scripture Bites. Visit bfainternational.com today to join the conversation.